If you were here for Connor's talk, um, which was really important, some of the things I'm going to say today, I want you to consider them in that vein of an agricultural system that uh, is based on an industrial model that's created a lot of unintended consequences that we're now struggling to deal with, uh, and our children primarily are struggling to deal with. So I'm going to ask you to reconsider that, and, uh, and I want to point you to what I think is, is next and what is what we're ready to make happen. So, and I also want to talk about changing the world. And if that's what we're here for, it's Earth Day, right? And if we're going to change the world, we first must repair our relationship with children. And this is not going to come from teaching them data points of climate change until there are no more polar bears left in the Arctic. That, that won't matter. If we can continue to teach the kids that it's okay to live a life that's uninspired, that we do not trust them to pursue their own interests, and that even if they do, their righteous actions will be met with obstruction and opposition by the adults in the room, uh, there will be no change. Most will simply be emotionally unavailable to join us in the work. So the first thing I believe we need to do is create schools that allow for students' inspiration to be in the driver's seat. This one-size-fits-all curriculum model that we currently have, it's, it's a failure. Uh, the standardized test-driven school fails to meet the imagination, the passion of youth. One would not be far off to relate this current model of standardized schooling to a factory or if you were more of a cynic, even a prison. Uh, bear, bear with me. Schools are surrounded by walls to keep the students in and the community that they live in on the outside. Uh, a student's time at school is managed by a series of bells that tell the students where to be and when. The beautiful mystery of learning and the curiosity that kids come into school with is attempted to be broken up into 45 minute blocks of time and that just doesn't work. That's not how I learn. Late to class? I don't trust you. Here's the tardy slip. Go to the office. Have to go to the bathroom. Here you get three permission slips to use a restroom in the course of a semester. Uh, you'd like to spend three hours doing digital drawing? Stop motion animation? You want to read Harry Potter all morning? Sorry, it's time that you have to go to history class right now. I really couldn't imagine if you asked me to a more foreign and uninspirational way to give children the opportunity to learn and grow in the passion that they naturally come into the world with. They have persistence and joy and we take it and we say, that's fine, put it over here because now you need to do what I'm gonna tell you to do. Children are the last people to receive their civil rights. They still have no civil rights and if you don't believe me, Ask a high school student what's going to happen if they leave in the middle of class to go somewhere like a doctor's appointment without a parent permission slip. They don't have civil rights. It doesn't have to be this way, though, folks. If we want to engage children, there are changes we can make that are aligned with how kids really learn and uh, not the outdated, conditioned idea of what a school looks like. We all picture desks lined up or in groups and this adult telling kids what should be important to them. Instead, we could shift our schools towards expanding interest-based options that do reflect current research that learning occurs best when it's meaningful and self-directed. Offerings that we might make for children might be things such as sewing, jewelry making, poetry, painting, book talks, gardening, robotics, music, as much free time as they might like, Heaven forbid, right? Giving kids free time. What will they do with it? Making and serving nourishing food to their peers. Maybe whole classes focused on collaborating with adults and each other to solve problems in their community. Problems like water. We face that here in Ojai. Food production, homelessness, the list could go on. How else could this look, this update to schools? Schools could have youth maker spaces and allow children to join the mentors in their offerings or to work on tinkerings of their own design. A school library should be accessible to any student all day long. There can be opportunities to serve the community 
and meaningful projects that give our children what I think is essential, and that's a sense of competency and a little bit of heroism. Worksheets don't have any heroism. 45-minute blocks of time have no heroism. Um, if we want to capture the curiosity of the children, we need to focus on what they are interested in learning. Now, I've asked kids what they'd change with school if they could, and here are some of the things that they've told me, things that they've said. More time to play, and don't discount play. Play is the work of children. If you think it's anything else, you're mistaken. It is evolutionarily the way that they learn by modeling the elders in their community with the tools of their culture. They want to grab at your iPhone, that's because you're on your iPhone all day long, right? They want to play on the computer, that's because we're on our computers. They look to the adult mentors and model what they see. This is how we've learned for two million years. If you want to take it back to Homo erectus, three million, you want to take it back to Homo habilis, the first tool maker. So they say they want to play with their friends. Sometimes they say, I don't know. But guess what, that's okay. They, uh, they want more time to talk with their friends, more time to play games, be free to just think about stuff, hang out with friends. And they say they want activities that feel real. They, uh, a couple told me about liking to cook or do some project in the community and make things and, and, and help others. So I want you to realize that, that out, currently outside of homeschooling, our children really have only one option about how to go about learning in their society. Schools haven't been able to break away from how they were imagined over 200 years ago in old Prussia. Sure, they may have new bells and whistles, they may have a smart board, a computer lab, maybe even nicer teachers at this school than at that school. But really, it's still fundamentally the one same model that we are clinging to because of our conditioning. Uh, all, all that we really require of children, all that we should require, I'm sorry, of children is that they follow what seems meaningful and what is inspiring to them. I looked up inspiration and it comes from the Latin root, meaning divine breath. If we were to gauge the breath of our current system, I think we're three cups of coffee in, some soft cheese and a cigarette, and it's not smelling fresh, okay? We can do better, and we can release the superheroes that our children are. Schools can be filled with teachers in the roles that they signed up for. I signed up to be a teacher and a mentor and a coach and not a taskmaster and not a prison guard. As a teacher, I've been trying to listen to kids for the last 17 years, and of course, you don't have to be a teacher to see what's up with children. There's no special pedagogy of paying attention. We're social animals, after all, and this is part of our human condition. Our children are, are really asking us for engagement. They want to be engaged with each other, they want to be engaged with their community, and they want to be engaged with meaningful work. You know, the, what we're trying right now, it's well-intentioned, but it's failing. Look around, they're stressed out of their mind, they're going home doing three hours of homework after seven hours in the classroom. You would call a friend who does that a workaholic and you might ask them to you know, spend a little more time with their family, right? So. I'm telling you it's time to release them from that, uh, that coerced model. We need to give them time. We need to trust them to do work that's meaningful. We can trust goodness in children, and we can trust that they're looking around at the world and that they do want to be successful. They want to participate and make their community a better place. Look for an example of the children from Stoneman Douglas. They will be the ones to make the U.S. a safer place by standing up to the NRA. I imagine they don't have much time right now to do all their standard-based homework. Uh, let's look at Mulala and her brave work bringing opportunities to her society to allow young women uh, to be educated. And lastly, I'd like to direct you right here to Ojai, to a project that's going on called the Ojai Water Project that came from asking kids at our self-directed learning center if there is a way that they would like to benefit the community that would be meaningful to them. And they said that one of the things they said was water at the drinking fountains in Ojai tastes pretty poor, terrible. We listened. So, so far together, children, adults, they did research, got the water tested at a lab, 
worked on a plan, created a three-prong fundraising campaign. They've already met with city um, planners, and they've raised nearly $1,500 so far toward the $5,000 minimum to install carbon filters at every public drinking fountain in the downtown city of Ojai. Right? That deserves, yeah. So we are almost there. It's, it's been approved. And a water bottle refill station right over here on the wall to our left. Um, freed, I ask you to consider children freed of the endless hours of following a standardized curriculum. And, and imagine what it'd be like if they could be more like these homeschool students who used math, public speaking, writing, learned science of what's in our drinking water and how to clean it. Additionally, these kids also learned to, uh, that they want to reduce the squandering of the precious limited fossil fuels in the production of single-use plastic water bottles. Children really are the superheroes, and they're ready to join the fight to save the world if we'll engage them in meaningful work that inspires them. They're the change makers, but we do have to trust their path. Uh, if we provide children with learning environments where adult mentors are allowed to be the good people they want to be, able to engage with the kids in meaningful ways, and the kids are allowed to be the good people that they really are, then they will grow into the type of person that will be so loving of others and of their fellow creatures that they will not stand to see their demise. Thank you.